Hello, everyone, and welcome to our A to J Author New User Webinar for September. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Authors Project Manager. Today, we're going to talk about the A to J DAT. That's our Document Assembly Tool, DAT. The DAT allows you to automate templates to produce completed forms for your end users. There are two parts to every document assembly package. The user-facing interview that asks questions, gives the user information, and gathers their answers, and the backend template which takes those answers and compiles them with the form overlaid with variables to produce the filled in document for the end user. Here's a quick graphic to show you how the process works. The user is asked a series of questions. Behind those blank fields shown to the user are variables. Those variables and the values the user gives them when answering the questions are stored in an answer file. That answer file for A to J author is an XML file in a format called ANX. When the user clicks the final button of the interview, usually a get my documents button, the answer file is passed to the server. That answer file is compiled with the document template and a completed PDF is returned to the end user. In today's webinar, we're gonna focus on the backend template. If you're interested in learning more about how to create the guided interview questions, check out our new user webinar from February, 2021. In the A to J DAT, there are two ways to create the template. You can either start with an existing PDF form and overlay variables on top of it. That's the Create PDF Template button. Or you can start from a blank template and add components like text sections, variables, page breaks, and if-else conditionals to build out a template from scratch. That's the Create Text Template button. I'll explain the different use cases when we get to each section. Whichever way you choose, your end user will have the same experience and the same output, which is a PDF downloading locally for them. Let's talk first about text templates. This is building out a template from scratch. The intended use case for this is a letter or a simple motion or a set of custom instructions that don't already have an existing PDF court form to work from. What I'm showing you here is an example from a COVID eviction interview Lone Star Legal Aid put together. This is one of their custom instruction sheets that has conditional information in it based on the legal aid organization that covers the area the user lives in. It's, the text templates are also useful when your end user may have a lot of information to say and you don't know if what they say will fit in a predetermined box like in an existing PDF. The text templates give you and your users more flexibility to expand on certain areas and to include additional information more easily if necessary. With a text template, you start with a blank template and add elements to it. There are template options that control the entire template. These include adding a custom header and or a custom footer. There are also formatting options with font type, font size, and how you want the section numbering to look. You have the ability to add conditional logic onto the individual templates themselves. This allows you to customize the final document assembly package for the end user, depending on the information they have provided you. For example, if you're creating a divorce petition and your court requires additional forms that the couple has children, you can conditionally insert those forms with the information related to the children for only those users that actually need it. The conditional logic can be based on a variable being true or false, like has children TF, or it can be based on logic that tests if a variable's value equals, does not equal, is greater than or less than some value. The custom header and the custom footer allow you to add additional contextual information to your templates. Often these are used, especially the footers, to denote that this form is being prepared with the help of X legal aid organization or by the court's self-help center. It allows those who see the subsequent produced document to know that the preparer had assistance with a document assembly package. When building out a text template, you have six elements that you can add to it. There are section and page breaks, a rich text element, which is where your text, variables, and hyperlinks go, and then there are if-else logic elements, repeat loop elements, and a custom legal navigator if-else element for use with LSC's Legal Navigator portal project. The A to J text templates are currently the back end piece that produces the customized information and resources within the Legal Navigator portal project. Rich text elements are likely going to be the most used element. This is where you add the meat of your template, the text, the variables, and the hyperlinks to direct your end user to additional resources or information. 
Adding variables is very easy. At the point in which you want to insert a variable, click the V icon and the variable picker will pop up. From there, you can scroll through the list of available variables or start typing and A to J author will sort them by matching characters to what you've typed. If else conditionals are the next popular item to add. These allow you to conditionally insert other elements like rich text elements or repeat loops based on a variable. Like the conditional insertion for the entire template under the template options, this allows you to select to insert an element if some variable is true or false, if it equals or doesn't equal, or is greater than or less than some value. As the name implies, if you have an if section, you can also have an else section here based on the same condition. You then insert elements into the if else section as needed. The next element to discuss is a repeat loop. These allow you to add a table, a list, or a text chunk numerous times to the document. This is used with repeat loop questions that gather the same information multiple times from the end user. For example, the names and birth dates of the user's children or their assets over $100 and the assets value. These elements can be repeated a set number of times or based on a repeating variable's value. The element can be customized to be a table or a list or a text paragraph. When you're done building out all of your text template elements, it's time to test assemble it. This is important to ensure that it looks the way you expect it to. To do this, you click the test assemble button within the template and select an answer file. As an aside for new authors, you create those answer files in preview mode by opening the debug panel, running through the interview, and then clicking save in the variable section of the debug panel. That'll download the answer file, that ANX file that I talked about earlier, to your local file storage for use in testing later. It's best practices to test your templates with a variety of answer files to accommodate the different conditions you've set inside of it. So if you have an if else element or a repeat loop, make sure to create a couple different variations of your answer file to test those scenarios. Now we're gonna talk about the second way that you can create a template in the A to J DAT, the PDF template. This option allows you to start with an existing court form or other PDF and overlay variables on top of it. This is the easiest way to build out a template because you've got all of the formatting, margins, court information, everything that's already on the form is there, ready for you to use with your existing PDF. To get started, you click Create PDF Template, then this screen appears. Then you click Upload PDF, and your local file management tool will open up, and you'll be able to select the base PDF to start with. A to J Author will then load your PDF, and you're ready to start automating. To start, add a you want to add a field to a blank line on your PDF. To add a field, you just need to double click on the line and A to J author will estimate the approximate length and height of the field. If you want to make adjustments, you can by dragging the field's corners to the correct size. If A to J author can't approximate the size, you can manually draw a field wherever you want on the template by clicking on the template and holding down the mouse as you draw the field. After you draw the field, you can right click to open the variable editor then you can create a new variable or insert an existing one, like I did here with petitioner name full TE. This next GIF shows me adding a field, then test assembling to make sure that it appears as I expect it to. There are variable options for the PDF template that allow it to handle different types of multiple checkboxes that can let you pass a value or a check mark, and you can also add an addendum here if necessary. All of these options allow you to customize your template and hopefully meet your authoring needs. As you're working through your template, if you hit a snag or there's a feature that you could really use but don't see, our team always wants to hear about it. You can reach out to me with those feature requests. My email will be at the end of the slide deck, but it's jessica at cali.org, C-A-L-I.org. You also have true-false checkboxes. This variable type allows for the same checkmark style options as the multiple choice ones. So you can have a check, an X, a circle with an X, circle with a check, a filled in circle, a box with an X, a box with a check, or a filled in box as the option to um, display your end user's choice on the completed form. Finally, there are template options similar to the text template that allow you to customize the entire template. 
One important one to note is the ability to replace the base layer PDF. This is the PDF you started with. This is particularly helpful if your court tends to change the form, like the court updated their logo or they moved around a line, they changed where something is asked for on the form. You don't have to re-automate the entire thing. You can just swap out the base PDF layer and then move around the fields and variables as necessary to fit their new placement. It's a big time saver not having to start from scratch. You just have to replace the underlying PDF and do a little changes and your existing interview is still valid and most of the hard work that has gone into automation is still valid as well. Also here is the ability to conditionally insert PDF templates like text templates has. The PDF template allows for multiple page documents. You are not restricted to one page PDFs. You can have as many pages as you need. And there are a couple cool keyboard shortcuts built in that are accessible by clicking control plus the forward slash or command plus the forward slash on a Mac. They allow you to move or nudge boxes around, to resize, to duplicate boxes. If you found the exact perfect size for a checkbox and you want to use that repeatedly, you can duplicate that box and you can move all of them around, move some of them around, delete them if necessary. So you can access these keyboard shortcuts by opening up the uh, control panel there. Finally, both uh, text and PDF templates use a specific destination DAT option. So there are two that are related to the A to J DAT templates. Assemble, generate PDF document, and assemble, generate PDF and process form. Assemble, generate PDF document generates the document but does not close the browser window. The user will need to close the interview window. Once their document is generated, then they can manually close the, the interview itself. If you choose assemble, generate PDF and process form, this generates the document, so the end user's PDF downloads to their local machine, and then it also posts their answer file, the ANX file, to wherever um, is set up to receive it in the, um, the host organization's directions under the post. So um, if you are hosting it on Law Help Interactive, our national partner who hosts for LSC funded organizations and some courts, you can have the post go directly to LHI and um, it, then the user will be able to save their answers, come back, regenerate the document, reload the answer, or reload the interview using this assemble, generate PDF and process form. Same for if you're hosting your interview and template on a to j.org, which is Callie's hosting site that we provide for free for anyone who is creating interviews for self-represented litigants. If you're self-hosting, you can direct that post request to send the answer file on anywhere into a case management system, into an e-filing system. The possibilities are uh, sort of endless there. But those are the two options that you use on that last get my document button in the interview. You want it to either assemble, generate PDF, or assemble, generate PDF, and process form. So one of the things we have created in order to help you learn how to use the DAT is a sample exercise. These sample exercises are found on our website under the Learn tab, a2jauthor.org, and then you go to the Learn tab. This specific sample exercise that I'm showing here is the quick and easy automation for the A to J DAT. It will teach you how to automate a very simple form but one that contains all of the elements of a normal template. And a normal form will have a text field, it may have a date field, a text long field, uh, pick from list, uh, multiple choice checkboxes, multiple choice radio buttons, phone numbers, zip codes, numbers, and a true false um, checkbox. All of that is covered in this quick and easy automation. And this exercise can be done in roughly 30 minutes. So you can get your hands wet and try out what you've learned today in a simple 30 minute exercise. So sample exercise, quick and easy automation with A to J author under the learn tab on www.a2jauthor.org. As always, if you have questions, you can reach out to me, jessica at cali.org. You can also follow us on Twitter at A to J author or check out our website, a to J author.org. Everything I've shown you today and all of our training materials and other resources, including the authoring software, are available for free. And we, as I mentioned, provide free hosting for anyone who's looking to make guided interviews for self-represented litigants. We are also open source. You can check out all of our the tech behind A to J Author on our GitHub repos, github.com slash ccali slash A2J viewer. That's the first one to go to, and it can direct you to 
the authoring suite um, on our GitHub repo. Again, thank you for uh, coming to our webinar today and feel free to reach out to me with any questions you have on authoring or anything related to A to J author. Have a great day.